the rainforest in the south, brought savanna woodlands at the center to the semi-desert region in the north. Nigeria offers a remarkable range of physical beauty on her land. Yes, indeed. I mean, the motherland is so vast and her people so diverse. With over 250 ethnic groups speaking more than 500 languages, our rich cultural heritage takes expression in different forms. Now, today on the program, it is those symbolic ceremonies and festivities that portray culture at its finest. My name is Ijoma Njamanze. I'm Nasir Omar. And you are in for a jolly good ride in just a moment. We're starting the show right off at the north central of Nigeria, home to the Bagi tribe. Now these are one unique set of people, praised especially for their ability to maintain the sacredness of the culture in spite of civilization. Ima takes us through a typical traditional marriage ceremony in Bagi land. Take a look. There are two things that make Agbagi people more distinct from other people in Nigeria. Their love for peace and the love for their culture. The culture of Bagi people shows how they have come to terms with the universe. This is achieved through their daily aspiration to give life a meaning, no matter the situation they find themselves. Giving life a meaning requires deep introspection, which is why a baggy woman doesn't carry load on her head, because it is the part of the body with which they think out a living. Another exciting endeavor in typical baggy culture is their marriage. Initiation into the marital life for a male bagiza begins around the ages of 15 to 18 years. For a baggy girl, betrothment could be considered between the ages of 12 to 15 years. It is expected that the girl will be mature for marriage by the time the dowry payment is completed. However, before the process of dowry payment begins, investigations are carried out on each by both families to verify certain information about their would-be in-laws, which include whether the family is hard-working, troublesome, or associated with hunger. Are they respectful? How fair is the family history with marriages? Is there any history of family infidelity or infertility? And most importantly, whether the bride or groom-to-be has been secretly betrothed to somebody in the past. Once those questions are satisfactorily answered and the families have agreed with one another, then courtship and the payment of the dowry begins. The groom is here required to do some farm work for the bride's parents two or three times in a year for the period of seven years. Usually, the groom is assisted by his friends. The groom is also expected to present an equivalent of 50 kilogram of guinea corn of his own harvest to the bride's family. This is called wiga. He begins with one wigger for the first year, two wigger for the second year, until the seventh year when he is expected to present seven wiggers. These seven year labor by the groom to the bride is the dowry payment. Once the dowry is completely paid, the wedding day is picked. During the wedding, the bride is accompanied to her new home by five or more maids.
This ceremony is necessary to ensure the chastity of the bride. There is usually celebration at the groom's house from sunset till dawn. However, a handshake with religion and civilization by Bagi people has given birth to partial submission of these cultural practices. Nowadays, the suitor no longer goes through a seven-year labor as a dowry payment. The religious laid down procedures and now the basis for most of the marriages in Bagi land. One of the common factors of either cultural or religious marriages is excitement on the D-Day. I knew she was my wife to be because she had the attribute I needed in a woman, in my future woman. And I saw it in her, smiling face, sleepless, fairness, and I, 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 I believe that would give me joy and her attitude complimented for that. Her beauty, her calmness, and her personality. How did you meet? We met at the friend's wedding. Or should I say a cousin's wedding? I was sitting somewhere behind her, and God just spoke to me. That's just the language I will use. program that showcases Nigeria in all its entirety. From northeast, southeast, and north central part of Nigeria. It is a program that brings you different aspects of Nigeria life. Name it, everything you need to know about Nigeria 
you can be sure will be captured at one time or another here on the program. In any city planning, there are provisions for basic social amenities. Communication is one area where modern technology is most important. This is our Nigeria. My name is Ijoma Okorombo. And I'm Nasir Umar. You want to stick around for this one? Moving on to Cross River State, South South Nigeria, the Itegidi Aji Festival is one fascinating event in the area. Jacqueline tells us why. From time past, they have often been conscious efforts in putting together some code of behavior and or traditions aimed at ordering society and also providing avenues for social interactions among members of such a given society. These traditions through consistent practice become part of a people's existence, so much that they create for them an identity. The Itigidi community is the headquarters of the Abbey local government area of Cross River State, South South Nigeria. The people of the community are predominantly farmers, therefore farming is their main economic activity. They are also known to be a peaceful people. Historically, they reached their present location after a series of migrations and movements due to the east-west migration around the world. East-west migration route of the Agbos has not been definite. Early enough, the people of Itigidi, comprising 24 tribes, had to move from Central Africa through their various routes till they came to the Benue Niger Trough, where they entered into Nigeria. Our cultural festival is a religious cultural festival that is celebrated by groups of Agbo tribe, especially the Itigidi people. The Itigidi Aji festival is one of the most famous festivals which displays the rich culture of the Isobo people. The celebration of the Itigidi Aji festival is held by the people with tenacity because of the values derived from its practice and it is annually celebrated. The people of the community during the annual festival pay respect to their ancestors where they pray for good health and prosperity for that year. A lot of people from the community who live in other places return home for the festival as they believe that their success is likely determined by their ancestors. Edela is one of those things you know that was given that we found that it's one of those unique festivals that you cannot get anywhere in the world. So it's, it's one of those festivals that you cannot miss if you're from this community. It's so beautiful, everybody looks forward for it. I mean I have to come all the way you know from US for this. Every year it must be celebrated by our ancestors. This Edele, even our forefathers born to meet it in this very playground. During the festival, folk stories are told. Elderly ones give advice and educate younger ones. The agricultural festival also features presentation of farm produce. Other social events like music, dance and other cultural displays also take place during the agricultural festival. <laughs>
the Aji Adele Festival in Itigidi is the culmination of all festivals put together. It brings Itigidi people from far and wide, those in diaspora, to come home to celebrate that the Lord God has provided for them for the rest of the year. It is a homecoming. The time that every person who is an indigenous of Itigiri, boy, girl, man, woman, comes home to join with those who are living at home to rejoice for their well-being and to thank God for providing them life for a whole year. The Itigidi Aji Festival from Cross River State, South South Nigeria, is indeed a festival to attend. <laughs> The birth of a child is a very joyous moment for every family. And equally important is the naming of this child. You can say that again. I mean, in most parts of Africa, naming ceremonies are extremely elaborate, uniting not only the immediate family, but in some cases, the whole community or village. Nigeria is no exception, as this tradition is practiced in different ways across all tribes. Now Awal spotlights a naming ceremony in the House of Lani culture. A ceremony may mark a rite of passage in a human life, marking the significance of, for example, birth, initiation, Puberty, graduation, awarding. Other society wide ceremonies may mark annual, seasonal, or recurrent events, such as inauguration of an elected office holder, opening and closing of a sports event, while some ceremonies underscore the importance of a non-regular special occasions such as coronation of a monarch, victory in a battle, and so on. <laughs> Ceremonies may have a physical display or theoretical component dance, a procession, the laying of hands. Both physical and verbal components of a ceremony may become part of a liturgy, public worship performed by a religious group according to its belief, customs and traditions. Naming ceremony in Hausalan is one out of several ceremonies in the region. The naming ceremony is held seven days after the birth of a child. In traditional House of Lani culture, as soon as a wife is pregnant and then gives birth, preparation for boiling water used for cooking commences for the daily birth of the wife. The father then gets colonels, dates, biscuits, as the case may be, which he will offer to his guests, in addition to sacrificial animal required for the naming of the child. On the third day, after the child is born, the kauri food is prepared and distributed to the relatives and friends, signaling the birth of the child. On the sixth day, after delivery, notices are spread out to the friends and well-wishers, inviting them to the naming ceremony proper. On the D-Day, men stay outside the house or at the masjid, while women stay inside the house and await the coming of the Imam. 
When the Imam comes, he slaughters the sacrificial animal that the father had earlier provided. After the sacrifice, the Imam leads other people to supplicate for the blessings of the child, the child parents, and even the nation, as well as other matters. At this point, the name of the child is made public. <laughs> A Baba is then called upon to shave off the child's hair and also give the baby any desired tribal mark if required by the family. Names of children are mostly chosen from the Quran by the parents. Girls are often named after historical figures or among the wives of the prophets. Once the child's name has been given and prayers offered, mostly celebrations are continued by women who have converged in the house. The magnitude of the event is best determined by the position of the arrival of the child into the family and other circumstances. For example, if the child happens to be the first child, it is likely to record high-profile ceremony. Attendance is very significant to people close to the family. Presence at the events cement ties, while absence at such ceremonies elicit excuses in defense. Naming ceremony in Hausa land are mostly observed in accordance with the teachings of Islam. <laughs> Well, I'm sure by now you can tell that no ceremony is complete in Nigeria without a lot of eating, drinking, dancing, you know, merriment and fanfare to say the least. And we take pride in it. That's how it has been on our Nigeria Today. See you again next time.